Hopefully it's obvious by the thumbnail of this video that I have two Volkswagen Beetles, um, you know, unless I go and decide to change that, but there are two bugs behind me, clearly. And I think that you'll find pretty much anyone that uploads anything about Volkswagens on the internet is gonna have kind of a bias toward them. You don't really own a Volkswagen and not have a bias because obviously if you didn't like it, you'd probably get rid of it, which I find most people typically hold on to theirs or they end up, you know, getting rid of it and then coming back and finding another Volkswagen that they want. So we're gonna go ahead today and talk about why a Volkswagen should be one of your first class of cars if you don't own one yet, or why I'd make it a nice addition to your stable. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with some myths then about Volkswagens. Uh, the biggest one obviously is that they're slow and Well, <laughs> they are usually pretty slow. Most of them are gonna have 30 to 50 horsepower stock and most of them are in pretty stock condition, but they're very light cars and you know it's pretty cheap to build one. Another myth about these cars is that they're unreliable and that is definitely not the case. As long as the previous owner has upkept on all the maintenance and as long as you follow maintenance schedules, they're very reliable cars. And in fact, they're known for their reliability and that's the reason they were so popular. Obviously, if you're buying something that's been you know, parked in a barn for 20 years, it's not gonna be as reliable as something that's been daily driven for the past few years. But as long as you're keeping up on maintenance on these, they're actually fairly reliable cars. Volkswagen would not have sold 23 million of these if they weren't reliable cars. Okay, and then one of the other things I hear about these is that they're expensive, and that's definitely not true. Unless you want an oval or a splitty, pretty much everything else is pretty reasonable. Uh, you can pretty much get whatever you want for under 15,000 and if you just want a driver under 10 is super easy to find especially if you could settle in an older year uh, anything you know 68 and up you could get those for usually under five grand or right around that five grand mark depending kind of the condition that you want a mileage on it and everything also parts for these are super easy to find you could pretty much build this out of a catalog if you really wanted to now there's a few parts here and there especially if you go back to the later models that are a little bit harder to find and for the parts that you can't find, there's probably gonna be some laying around somewhere. And once again, you know, once you get to the really early models, it gets a little bit harder to find stuff, but there's so many of these cars around and there's so many just sitting in, you know, people's yards rotting away. It's not all that hard to find parts. You might not be able to find stuff locally all the time because I have ran into that, but pretty much at the end of the day, you could find almost anything you needed, uh, you know, on. Facebook, Marketplace, there's forums, the Samba. So one of the other reasons I like Volkswagens is because they're very easy to work on. And to be honest, it's basically a lawnmower engine with four cylinders. There's nothing really that complicated about it. You don't need really any crazy tools. You know, having a normal set of metric tools is gonna get about 95% of jobs done on a Beetle that you would need to do. And there's tons of aftermarket support for this. I'm just gonna name a few, and this isn't even like touching the surface. Like there's so many companies that produce parts for these cars because they were so common, they still are pretty common. But you have J-Bugs, you have CB Performance, you have Wolfsburg, you have uh, Volkswagen of America, and the list goes on and on. Another thing I like about Volkswagen Beetles is that they're very cheap to get into, uh, at least as far as like getting in the cars and everything. You could pick up one for around 5,000 bucks and you could enter it in a show and it would be pretty respectable. Um, you know, you're probably not gonna win any prizes in that price range, but if you like Super Beetles, if you're okay with the later model Beetle, like you could totally find one of those that's a little better than a daily driver even for around that 5,000 bucks. And of course, if you want an older one, uh, there's kind of patina ones out there. There's ones that are drivers. You could be probably a little bit more than 5,000, but you could probably be in that five, $8,000 mark pretty easy. I actually just bought that one back there and that was only 6,500. One of my absolute favorite thing about Volkswagen Beetles is that there's so many different types. And there's a type of Volkswagen Beetle for whoever you may be, whatever part of you know the car enthusiast niche that you're in. If you want a low rider and you want it slammed, we have that. Uh, there's that one back there is on bags. Uh, if you want something more stock and you want you know, it to be pretty much a replica of how it came out of the factory, there's those cars too. It's something like that. And obviously there's different scales of, you know, do you want a driver? Do you want a show car? There's race cars, there's autocross cars, there's drag cars, there's off-roading Baja bugs. Pretty much any kind of automotive niche that you're in, you could find a Volkswagen Beetle that would fit in that niche perfectly. One thing I will say is if you don't like attention or talking to people, uh, a Volkswagen Beetle might not be the car for you. I have lots of people come up to me all the time and ask, hey, what year is that? Hey, you know, my family had one of these when I was growing up. 
Um, they're just great cars and they bring people together. They get more attention than my motorcycle does. I have an older Nova uh, and I have a Dodge Neon SRT4. Hands down, they probably get three to four times, and I'm not even exaggerating, more attention than any of those cars. They also have a great community. Uh, there are some kind of you know communities in the car world that are a little toxic. Volkswagen Beetles typically don't have that. Most people are pretty respectable. Uh, most people kind of respect what you're doing. I mean, you know, there's people that don't really like the lowrider scene. There's people that don't really like the whole off-road scene. Uh, but you don't really have a lot of hate out there. It's just not their style kind of thing versus there's other, you know, car groups or car pages and stuff where if you went out of the norm, you know, you get bashed for that. They also, I mean, you know, being a car enthusiast, we like driving. And especially if this is going to be your first, you know, classic car. They get really good gas mileage. This one here, the orange one, probably gets about 30 or so, 33 highway. And that one probably gets about 28 highway, 24-ish city. I mean, and those are pretty rough estimates. Unless you have a really radically built engine, you're probably gonna get upper 20s as far as gas mileage, maybe mid 20s, you know, kind of worst case scenario. They actually hold their value really well too. And I think in the past five years, they've actually shot up in value. And you know, Five years ago, uh, probably closer, well, I guess I'm getting old. <laughs> but, you know, 10 years ago or so, you used to be able to pick up a nice driver for two to 3,000 bucks. You cannot find a nice driver for two to $3,000 today unless you know someone that's selling the car or unless they need to get rid of it that day. And unless you're pouring money into it to make it a race car or you buy something that's a complete, you know, project, if you're just buying something that's a driver, I don't foresee you putting so much money into the car that you're not going to get it back. Now, if you blow up the engine or something, obviously, and you go out and buy a brand new engine, you know, you might be out money there, especially if you take it to mechanic and do everything. But you could find, you know, stock engines for $500, 1000 bucks, kind of depending on the condition all day. And that's here in the Midwest where it's a little bit harder to find stuff versus the South where stuff isn't, you know, is rusted out and everything. And at the end of the day, they're honestly just pretty fun cars. They're not very fast, but they get a lot of looks and they're fun to cruise around in. You get great gas mileage, you know, who doesn't love that?